There's no question the earth is busted up into plates, and there's no question these plates are moving. And when they move, it causes tsunamis and earthquakes and volcanoes. There's no question that stuff happens. The question is, when did this happen to the earth? I think it happened about 4,400 years ago at the very beginning of the flood. And evolutionists will say, so, well, don't you see that's proof of Pangaea? These continents fit together. Can't you see how South America and Africa seem to be a fit? Yeah, my house and the neighbor's house would fit too if you slid them together. What does that prove? Nothing. <laughs> it doesn't prove the street oozed up in between them and the houses slid apart, okay? It's a pure coincidence. The shape of these continents is an absolute pure coincidence based upon the water level. Like I said in my last video, it is not the coastlines of the continents that fit together, but the continental shelves. The fit of the coastlines are dependent on sea levels. While the continental shelves do not vary, they fit together better than their coastlines do anyway. Similar fossils are found in opposite sides of the ocean. Well, that may be true. But it's also true those same fossils are found literally all over the world. Those fossils found all over the world is just as much evidence of a flood. I mean, a worldwide flood, how far could the dead animals float around? Uh, quite a ways, right? No, the same fossils are not found all over the world. What we do find is that the continents that were supposedly part of the same landmass at a certain time period have similar fossils. Continents that were not connected do not have these fossils in that time period. Even Hoven's own visual aids contradict him here. In fact, since there are lots of fossils that aren't found in many places, this would seem to contradict his theory. They don't tell you they shrank Africa nearly 35 or 40 percent to make them fit, do they? They don't tell you that Mexico and Central America are gone. Hey, Senor, que pasa? Donde esta Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala? They don't tell you that Europe and South America were rotated counterclockwise and Africa was rotated clockwise to make them fit. Now, I actually have a clip of how scientists think the plates moved. I want you to look at it and see if we see Africa almost double in size between the time of Pangaea and now. Yes, there might be some change in the size of the continents, but that is because of sea level change. The continental shelves, shown in light blue, remain constant. I also see some of Central America. Much of it's underwater, but it's there. As for the rotation of the continents, so, the plates are literally floating on the mantle. Rotation is definitely possible. And they also don't tell you what I think ought to be obvious to a kindergartner. Did you know, if you took the water out of the oceans, you would notice there is dirt underneath. Gasp! Really? I mean, the oceans actually have a bottom to them. No kidding. How many knew that already, okay? I mean, they, they do have a bottom, okay? So people say, do you think the Earth was ever, the continents were ever connected? I say, well, duh, they're still connected right now. What do you mean, were they connected? Hello, they're still connected. They've always been connected. Ha ha ha, no. They aren't connected for a very simple reason. They're on separate plates. You know, that's kind of why it's called plate tectonics. They literally are on different pieces of crust. Textbooks say, well, yes, there are magnetic reversals at the bottom of this mid-Atlantic ridge. Well, that's simply baloney, okay? There are no reversed polarity areas, unless it's where rocks flipped over when the fountains of the deep broke open. That may have happened in some areas. But this, this is a lie, talking about magnetic reversals. Even uh, one author wrote in a book, uh, uh, Deep Crustal Drilling in the North Atlantic Ocean, Science Magazine, Volume 204. He said, it's clear the simple model of uniformly magnetized crustal blocks of alternating polarity does not represent reality. What they show you in your textbooks is not reality. I guess I should explain magnetic reversal since I forgot it in my last video. The north and south magnetic poles switch places every couple of hundred thousand years. We know this from paleomagnetism. There's evidence of this all over the sea floor. We can detect which positions the north or south poles were when the rocks cooled using methods described in my last video. Now, if the sea floor is actually spreading out, these flips in polarity should be recorded on the sea floor. The quote Ken Helvin used is correct. He took a completely different meaning from it than the writer intended, though. If you look at this picture, where the colors represent the seafloor with today's polarity, they are not uniformly magnetized blocks. There is, however, a distinct pattern that cannot be a coincidence. It is a pattern that occurs all across the seafloor, everywhere. The polarity of the ocean floor occurs in bands parallel to the mid-ocean ridge they originate from, switching occasionally. There is no abrupt transition where polarities reverse, however. Oh, there are no magnetic reversals, only stronger and weaker magnetism. It's actually a jumbled up mess down there at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. See, the Earth has lost 10% of its magnetic strength in the last 150 years. It's lost 40% of its strength in the last 1,000 years. 
It's pretty overwhelming evidence that the Earth's magnetic field is getting weaker. What does that mean? Well, that means it used to be stronger. And if the Earth's magnetic field is getting weaker, this creates a problem because if you go back in time, about 25,000 years, the magnetic strength would have been too great for life to exist here because of the heat generated. And so the evolutionists have to find an answer for the problem. Hey, we're watching the magnetic field decline, so it must be going through reversals. It has never been observed to reverse. It's only been observed to decline. Wait, did you catch that? Let's play it again. Oh, there are no magnetic reversals, only stronger and weaker magnetism. It has never been observed to reverse. It's only been observed to decline. So, Ken Oven is both saying that the magnetic field has gotten stronger and weaker in the past, and then says that it only has been observed to decline. So which is it? Anyway, there are several videos about what Ken Hovind said about a strong enough magnetic field killing life. Either way, if what Ken Hovind said about the magnetic field varying in strength is correct, then both of his later statements are invalid. Ken Hovind obviously isn't the only young earth creationist voice out there. My next video will deal with uh, several other claims made by creationists.